Hey everybody, Gunnison Undercover. Today is Monday, July 15th, 2019. The time is 7.41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sun is going down. It's a lovely summer evening right now. It's kind of warm today, but right now it's uh, not too bad. Humidity's up. I'm enjoying the evening like I always try to do in the summer. So we got an unfortunate Blue Zero Hero story. This is a special shout out to you badge bunnies out there who think it's a great idea to go, go date these guys with the uniforms. So let's find out what this fine, upstanding, well-trained professional out risking his life protecting and serving has done. This is reported at NJ.com and it reads as follows. Newer cop shoots and kills ex-wife wounds her boyfriend's authorities say. There it is right there. I'll provide a picture, a better picture in the video. So let's find out. I have really haven't read this whole thing. I just know what he did based on the title. A Newark police officer killed his ex-wife and wounded her boyfriend in shooting late Sunday night in Morristown County, Morris County, before being arrested at his parents' home on Monday morning, authorities said. Lieutenant John Formasano <coughs> a 24-year veteran shot the woman inside a home on Mirror Place in Jefferson around 11.20 p.m., officials said. His wife's name was not immediately available. The condition of her boyfriend was also not known. Now, what puzzles me here is his ex-wife. So I want to say to you guys out there, when you break up your wife, your girlfriend, let it go. Just let it go. It's not yours anymore. Just let it go. It's not yours. Just Give it up. I, I know what it's like. I've been there. But you have to learn to give it up. Now, the what I don't get with this Lieutenant John Formasano, he's a 24-year veteran. He had one more year to go. One more lousy year to go, and he could retire. I don't know what his pay is. He, he's Newark. He's probably making uh, 140, 150, 130. I don't know. But his retirement is probably going to be $80,000 a year. And he goes and he throws it all away. He's done. He's not ever going to see his see his retirement money. Even when he gets out of prison, he's not going to have nothing. Let me continue. Former Sano was taken into custody at his parents' house in Livingston at around 2 a.m. A spokesman for Essex County Prosecutor's Office said he has been suspended without pay. Now, that's the joke of the whole thing here. Not that this story is a joke. But the joke of the whole thing is he's been suspended without pay. You think it really matters at this point? Now, what I saw when I saw this first thing that came to my mind was, well, what's it take to fire these bums? If the guy killed his wife and wounded the other guy, he gets fired. If I went out and shot my ex-wife and and wounded her boyfriend, my jobs are not going to keep me. They're going to they don't want nothing to do with me at this point. They're going to let me go. Simple as that. But this is how corrupt this. This system is when it comes to treating police differently than the rest of us get treated in the public sector. The guy shot his wife, killed her, should be fired. There's no suspending without pay. Fire is there. I mean, te I mean, technically, he's done. He's not coming back. He's suspended uh, indefinitely. But they should just fire him. Say, that's it. You're done. You're not getting your... But so what's going to happen here, before I read on, is... He's probably not too far away from his retirement. So by suspending him without pay, they will allow to kick that can down the road long enough. It'll it, it, probably be a year before he gets convicted in court. So if they can just kick that can down the road long enough, he will be able to apply for his retirement. And he'll get money. I mean, he'll be in prison, but he won't get the money. But his daughter can get the money, his ex-wife, whoever he, you know, he owes money to can get that money. So that's the logic behind the suspending without pay rather than firing him because he's too close to the end and it's feasible that he could just kick the can long enough and get his uh, retirement so that after he spends his 10 years or 15 years in prison, he'll get out and he'll have something to live on. News of Formasano's... Uh, 
arrest stunned his colleagues at the Newark Police Department, according to James Stewart Jr. Well, it didn't stun me. I would expect something like this to happen. How many stories have I reported on this so far? According to James, uh, blah, blah, president of the Newark Fraternal Order of Police. To say that we are all shocked by the events of early this morning would be a tremendous understatement, said Stewart. In a statement knowing that he attended the police academy with for, for Masano. He had been going through marital problems and he has been taking care of his mother who was battling serious health issues, but there was no indication that any violence was being contemplated, Stewart said. Our hearts break for his children and our condolences go out to the shattered family of his wife. We are all just stunned. Again, I'll get back to you guys out there. You're getting divorced. Just, especially that, that stature. It probably was happening. They're fighting over custody. She probably wants all his money plus half of his pension. And the poor guy's going nuts. And uh, he snaps. And this is the problem with police. When they snap, they got a gun. It's not like you and I. We snap. What do we do? We, uh, I don't know, we go over and get in a fight and punch her or something. But they get that gun and they snap and, and they're full of rage. We already know they're full of rage. And violence is their go-to tactic because when they can't, they don't have much in the way of logic. So when the logic and the reasoning goes out the door, their go-to tactic to resolve a problem is violence. We see it a gazillion times on all these videos out there on YouTube. That their go-to problem-solving method is violence and intimidation. Now, in his defense, we don't know what his wife's been doing. Maybe his wife was taunting him. Maybe she was stopping him from seeing the kids. And I can understand from a man if uh, she's got a new guy around and he's toting the kids around the car and buying them ice cream and stuff. It's it's uh, it's it's a it's a it's a uh, you know it's humiliating. It's annoying. And I mean, you don't want another man around your kid trying to play daddy or something. And we know a lot of these females out there, and I know I'm gonna catch some crap, but we know a lot of you females out there like to get a new man and then portray him as a good guy. Look what the good guy's doing. Just to rub it in your ex's face. They use the children as weapons. A retired Passaic County Sheriff's officer who lives in the neighborhood said a neighbor saw the shooter. Former Sano went in the front door, Thomas Verone said, he shot the boyfriend three times and he shot the wife two times. She ran out of that house, went next door, neighbor banging on the door yelling she had been shot, but it was late at night, so no one answered. He came out, followed her, and she went to the other neighbor's house. She opened the screen door and then he unloaded more on her. She fell there. She heard the shots, but she thought it was fireworks because kids run around doing that. Julie Rivera, Rivera said she was visiting her boyfriend when the shots rang out. We heard three shots. I've never heard gunshots before, so in my mind, I'm thinking they were fireworks. And then we hear police, Rivera said. Our phones started blowing up, lock your doors. There was a shooting. And then we see everywhere all over there was a shooting. Stories are coming out. Public records show. Former Stano, 49, purchased a home on Mirror Place nearly a decade ago. And that's all they say about that. So we don't know anymore. This is just a warning to you badge bunnies out there. You want to think twice about getting involved with these law enforcement officers. How many stories have I reported with violence? I mean, I, I reported one story where the guy came home, shot his wife, shot his daughter, and shot his grandkid. He snapped. This is it's just too much. The, the, the domestic violence in law enforcement is higher than the national average. The voice is higher. I just, I just don't get some of these women who run to these guys in the uniform. I mean, there's so many other good, hardworking men out there that you could go to that are not going to do these things to you. I just don't get it. You know, you're attracted to that badge and the power for what? So you can end up like this lady, dead? Or end up like that lady over down in Lacey Township cop to beat the crap out of her, threw her downstairs. I understand it's alleged. I don't know that for sure. I just, I just don't get it. With all the good men out there, regardless of what they make or anything, they get to work every day. They work hard. They come home. They try to do the right thing. And and 
instead of going after somebody like them who are good, you're going after somebody for a, a, for a uniform. That's your attraction, not the person, the uniform. I don't get it. Okay, I put the link in the description and uh, you can go read this story yourself. It's all over the place, uh, very tragic story. This dumb cop threw his uh, whole hit threw his life away, and I and I feel for these poor kids because they're orphans now. They don't have a mother, they don't have a father. He's going to be in prison, and then when he gets out, they're not going to want anything to do with him. So hopefully, hopefully there's grandparents or another family member that can take in these kids and uh, get them some therapy and uh, help them through this very tragic situation. This is Gunnison Undercover, till next time.